Hi everybody, welcome to the Film Festival webinar. I'm Natalie Rogers and let's go ahead and get started. And here's just a brief agenda about what we're going to go over. Just some reminders about what the project is, some important dates, what to include, how to prepare, uh, the suggested process that we have for how to make your video, some suggestions for apps and software, and some more examples and resources, and then we'll do questions at the end. Okay, so here is, uh, so, okay, so the project is basically um, our chance to really help you guys and your components kind of get a handle on how to, how to explain to the general public what we do. Um, a lot of the components are really complicated when you really get down into the science, and so it's it's hard for people to understand what we do. And we're, NSF is sort of leaning more towards using videos to communicate science, and we think that's kind of a cool idea. And coming in September, um, the National Science Foundation is sending out a bunch of people here for a site visit, and so we're hoping to, that this will sort of prepare everybody for that as well. Um, so each research component, and actually the um, uh, the education and outreach and diversity team will also be making a video, um, and it's going to feature your research and uh, its impacts in the state. And with impacts. NSF has a pretty strict definition of what an impact is. We're not necessarily looking for that here, but I'll get into more of that later. Um, so the requirements is it should be three minutes or less. Um, we kind of have a topic suggestion for you that I put on the PDF, which is uh, in a class of eighth grade students is taking a tour of your lab or your research sites, and it's your job to convince them that your component is the best and most exciting. Um, you can include topics like why you love what you do and why New Mexicans should care about what you're doing. Um, the audience is a general public targeted at the understanding of an eighth grade science level. And for the footage, uh, each video really should have footage of your lab or your field sites. Um, and we particularly encourage showcasing if you have equipment that's purchased with EBSCOR funds. That's kind of cool. Um, not all equipment is like, you know, really neat to look at on a video. But um, if you do have something that you think would look cool, then we'd love to see that as well. All right. So some important dates. Um, April 8th, I just kind of pulled out of the air. It was a a month away from when I started preparing um, this PowerPoint. And so it's just kind of a, this is just a, a sort of a suggestion as to when all your footage should be collected. Um, giving you about a month, that should be plenty of time to um, record some short little snippets in the labs or in the fields or anything like that. And then um, I will need your videos uh, via own cloud if you have access to own cloud and if not um, just in a Dropbox folder or some sort of shared folder because I'm sure it'll be too large of a file to email. So I'll need that by the 29th because um, the all hands meeting is on May 4th and I'll need to collect all the videos and make sure that we have them ready for the meeting on May 4th. Okay, so just a brief kind of suggestion again about what to include. Um, like I said, EPSCOR equipment in action, field site locations. Um, when I say diverse and creative representation of your component, um, I don't mean just diverse people. I mean also sort of uh, really talking about how diverse EPSCOR is. Uh, where we stretch across the state through different institutions, different locations across the state. Um, and of course, you know, any fun little hobbies and things that you all like to do or um, any of your humor and personality, that's always really awesome to include in a video to make it really interesting and fun to watch. Um, of course, we want to see enthusiasm for what you do because you should be loving what you do, hopefully. And um, so definitely make sure to include that. All right, so we'll talk a little bit about how to prepare. Um, we'll start with the story. You definitely want to have a cl one clear message. So whatever that message is that you want to convey about, you know, how your component is the best or anything like that, um, you want to make sure you have a thesis or, or a message that you really want to convey. Um, 
and then you want to kind of mold a story around something uh, around that message. Um, maybe it's a new way of looking at your component or interesting field experiences, but you definitely want to tell a story in a video. And it seems like three minutes may not be enough time to tell a good story, but as you look through some of the examples we've provided, um, you can actually do a lot in three minutes. And it's just sort of honing down all that information that's you know inside your component to sort of just a brief uh, message and a good story. Um, as you begin mapping out your story, you'll want to begin with a hook to interest your audience, and then again make the middle really concise and find your way find a way to make your story relatable, and um, finish with an ending to remember. And if I just want to say one more thing about the message you're trying to communicate. Um, if you're not clear about that message, your audience won't be either. So the target audience will determine how your um, how your format, uh, basically how you'll format your video and what kind of video it'll be and how you'll deliver your message. All right, so I got this from uh, while I was doing some video research over the last couple of months. Um, I got this from a website called The Scientist Videographer, and she's this woman who a few years back realized that using video on YouTube is a really, really good way to sort of communicate what you're doing to a larger group of people. And so she's sort of now become uh, sort of her own little expert about how to make science stories. And not all her videos are great, but a lot of them are. And she also does some tutorials about how uh, to tell a science story and how to make a video. She has some um, iMovie tutorials and stuff too. So her website might be worth checking out if, you, if you're if you interested. Um, she has nine ways to tell a science story. Um, the first one is it's a mystery, which is you present your information in the form of a mystery or forensic investigation. Uh, number two, you'd show how your work fits into a a uh, bigger picture, sort of your your work is part of a bigger puzzle, which a lot of EBSCOR research really is. Um, Number three, bridge the gap. So you explain what's known and what's not known and then how your work is trying to fill in that gap. And four, a historical perspective. So uh, you can show a timeline of events or put your work into a historical perspective if you're sort of building on what other people are doing. Um, number five, human dimension. So you want to explain how your topic affects people or describe your motiv your personal motivation. Uh, six, you can sort of begin with intriguing images or video footage or sounds and follow with an in-depth ex explanation. So if there's something in your work that you've recorded already or that you, you know, in the next month or so will record and you want to kind of do a show and tell, um, that would be, I, I usually those really make some great science videos. Uh, you can make a prediction, which you would invite the viewer to solve a problem or predict the outcome of a study. Um, and then you can start with a counterintuitive statement and prevents evidence, uh, present evidence for it or against it. And then finally, uh, what will I learn? Explain what the viewer, what the viewer will learn, and how it can be applied. So that's kind of more of, you know, how is your work important to the, you know, to people as a whole. So I've recently started doing storyboards. It's kind of an interesting process. Um, but when it comes to telling a story in video, sometimes just doing a script um, isn't really the best way to start. Um, a storyboard will give you an idea of how you need to film, if that makes sense. Um, it basically is a sketch of how to organize a story and then all the content within that story. So it'll help you define parameters of your story uh, within the available resources and uh, the time of the video. Uh, it'll help you organize and focus your story, and it'll also help you figure out what medium to use. So if you wanna, it'll, it'll help you say, okay, on this shot we wanna do a still, a still image, or on this shot we wanna do a close up. Um, over here we wanna show a wide angle of you know, our, our field site. Um, and at this link right here, there's a storyboard template you can download. There's also lots of them on the internet. Um, I was going to include some examples of storyboards, and I can as we get towards the end. Um, but, you know, again, you can just kind of go on Google and type in storyboard into the images, and it will pop up a whole bunch of examples. But we can take a look at that later if you guys want. Okay. 
Uh, one thing that we've kind of discovered also is that some of the main universities and also places like Santa Fe Community College, um, they have sort of a, a media department that offers services for um, anybody who wants to make a video or if you need someone else to edit your video, if you need someone to collect footage from you or f for you, if you're you know at New Mexico State and you can't come up to UNM or you can't uh, coordinate with somebody up here at UNM to get you some footage. Sometimes um, you can do that, and obviously a lot of these organizations or a lot of these departments will charge by the hour, and it can get pretty expensive because it's a lot of work. But um, for students, they I, I know for students at each university um, they may offer. Um, some free services as well. Um, a lot of the places you can also rent cameras. Art departments may have uh, video cameras if you don't want to use your phone for whatever reason. I think using your phone is fine, um, especially if it's a newer phone. I have a Galaxy X S6 and it records better video than the old video camera I used to have. Um, I know the new iPhone has a great uh, video camera on it as well. So the only thing is just make sure you're in a place where you can you know, hear the audio um, pretty well, even on your phone. And uh, Sumant, yes, I will get you um, a copy of the presentation. I'm actually going to put this whole webinar up on um, up online. So uh, I'll, I'm recording it, hopefully, and uh, um, so I'll put it up online. All righty. And then, of course, you can contact me for help. Um, I, I don't want to edit your videos for you. I want you guys to try and do this yourselves. But if you're if it's getting close to the deadline and you're really stuck, of course, I'm happy to help. All right, so let's go over uh, just this is a suggested process. Um, so again, uh, the first step you want to do is plan. You want to plan out how you want to tell your story. Of course, after you frame your message and you or after you build your message and you know what story you want to tell, uh, you want to plan out how you want to tell that story. Um, you want to know all the locations and footage that you need. Uh, consider the information that you need to get the point across and then mold your story around the audience demographics. Uh, frame your message using all of the planning that you've already done about how to tell your story. And then you want to write a script and you want to review that script with um, anybody that you interview. So you want to kind of write out a script for the whole movie um, just to help you remember what story you're telling. But you also want to do an interview script and then give that to your interviewee so they know what your message is and they know what you're trying to communicate. And that way they're prepared for the questions that you're going to ask them. This isn't like a gotcha video, you know, where you want to bombard someone and be like, hey, tell me about this. And then they get all flustered. Um, you know, you want to kind of set an interview time and give them the questions ahead of time and be like, here's what I'm trying to convey. And that should uh, that should work out pretty good, I think. Okay, so step two, um, this is when you shoot your video. Uh, you want to do a test run. So uh, like I said earlier, check on lighting and audio quality, especially if you're going to be indoors. Um, sometimes in labs, it can get really loud if there's a lot of equipment. So that may not be the best place to do, say, an interview. Um, sometimes outside might be good for lighting but a lot of that ambient wind that we get here in, uh, in New Mexico can kind of uh, mess up your audio as well. So just, uh, you know, plan a couple of different places to do, um, to do these interviews. And then if you're going to record anything inside or outside, just do a little test on what it'll sound like. And of course, you can always dub over later on during the editing process with a voiceover or with music. Um, Let's see. Always collect more footage than you need, for sure. Uh, that includes the interview questions. You know, you could interview someone for three minutes straight and that would be your whole video. But you, you know, a, a talking head on a video isn't too interesting. So uh, but you want to make sure that you have all of the information you need and you want to have more than more than enough information. That way you can cut it down during the editing process and kind of stick it in and you won't be short on footage. 
if you have some help uh, or you have things like a GoPro camera that can be mounted, try using multiple cameras from different angles. And so you'll have, you know, one person holding a cell phone to the right and one person holding it on the left. And one person could be up in up close and another could be farther away. And that kind of once you edit everything together, will give the video a little bit uh, more of an interesting dynamic. You've seen, you know, interviews they even do on the news. You know, they'll pan out and show the, the interviewer and the interviewee and then they'll zoom in on the next shot and just show the interviewee's face. So just things like that to think about. And that's not always possible and that's okay too. Um, you can also take different takes of the interview. So you can do your interview questions with a camera mounted next to you and then you can do them all over again uh, with you know the camera a little bit closer and then piece it together during the editing process. All right, uh, collect B-roll footage and still images if, or nece if, if necessary. Uh, B-roll footage is just, uh, you know, background footage. So things of pl plants, animals, equipment, facilities, landscapes, uh, you know, that you can use during a voiceover or during an interview, uh, just more interesting visuals. The rule of thirds, I think I have, okay, here we go. So this is, I just want to show you this real quick. This is what the rule of thirds looks like. So it's if you have, if you imagine that your, your video screen is, is divided into, uh, into this grid, you want to try and keep everything in, of, fo you don't want to, the point is you don't want to center everything in the middle. Uh, the subject in this picture is a tree and you see that the tree is kind of, uh, in between the uh, the center and the left center, and it just makes it look a little bit better on the video when you don't have you know your main subject right in the center. You want to kind of off center it, and the rule of thirds is just a fun way to do that. It's just a kind of an easy way to do that if you can imagine this grid. And a lot of camera apps, I think I have one. I don't. I think some of the new ones might have it. You can actually put it on your camera screen, the rule of thirds, which is kind of cool. Um, you can download videos from YouTube. You can also download music from YouTube. Uh, you want to make sure that you properly credit wherever you get that, whether it's probably at the end of the of the video is fine when you're rolling all your credits. Um, you know, since this isn't, ex I mean, it's not like we're going to make money off these videos or anything. I don't think you're going to get hit with a copyright violation, um, but it's just something good to keep in mind. You always want to give credit to other people um, for their own work, and uh, you just want to be careful about what you use and how you use it. All right, so step three is you just piece together all that footage that tells your story, and you can use... Uh, just either a voice recording uh, app or, you know, your own video camera just without and then not use uh, any of the visuals to add in a voiceover and music. You can add title slides and credits and graphics and animations. Animations are really hard if you know how to do them already. I applaud you. I'm learning how to do them myself and um, hopefully I'll get pretty good at them and I can start making animations for all the components, which would be great. Um, but you might have access to some. Your department uh, at your school may actually have some cool animations already. Um, there's lots of educational sites around there that around the internet that have um, really cool animations that show different processes. So you might want to poke around and see what you can find. Um, and then, of course, you want to make sure your video is less than three minutes long. Most videos with the most hits in terms of these kinds of fun science videos, uh, like Kickstarter videos, for instance, are about 90 seconds long, and that's the average. Uh, people start to lose interest after three minutes, so we want to try and keep it as close to that as possible. Um, you can find, you can also, like I said, find music on YouTube, but if you have iMovie or you have access to iMovie, um, it comes with a whole bunch of sound effects and different like stock soundtracks that you can use as well. All right, so let's talk about some apps and some editing software. Um, if you have a Mac, 
iMovie is fine. It's, it's really easy to use. Um, there's tons of tutorials online just to get you started, to sort of get you familiar with the interface. Um, if you need help from me, I'm, I can uh, probably put up a tutorial about iMovie if, if you guys uh, decide you really need that. Um, I've never used things like Window Movie Maker, which I know doesn't come on Windows 10, but you can still download it. And then there's another Windows 10 app called video editor master that's free and it I think it had some pretty good reviews I think it had like four out of five stars which is not bad and then we get into the really nitty-gritty stuff if you've ever used Adobe before um, you have Adobe Premiere Pro uh, which is part of the Adobe Creative Cloud or you can do um, Adobe Premiere Elements and then there's also Final Cut Pro now some of the computers at the different bigger universities might have either or both of these programs installed. And I'm sure, like I know at UNM, um, some of the uh, communications department has, their their computers has that. And I think, I think over in the engineering department, they used to also. Uh, so some of the some of the different departments might have this installed on their computer. And if you know how to use them, you can use them there. Uh, Adobe Premiere Pro is, it's it's intuitive to use once you get over how complicated the interface can look. It can be pretty intimidating. Um, but like iMovie, it's just a simple timeline. It's just taking your footage and putting it together consecutively and then sort of uh, having the, the system piece it together. Okay, so then you can also, if you want to do everything on your phone, which we can do now. Um, you can download apps on the iPhone that are like uh, Cameo or Splice, and you can actually shoot your video and then edit it on your phone. Some of them even allow uh, for you to add music and stuff, so you can kind of do the whole editing process on your phone. And so Cameo and Splice for the iPhone, and then I found one called Power Director for Android, which is free, and then you pay five bucks for the full version. Um, and then Adobe just released free apps for both iPhone and Android uh, called Adobe Premiere Clip. And I haven't used it yet. They like literally just released it, I think, last week. So um, I'm not sure how it works, but it, it looks pretty cool. It's meant to be able to film quick videos and put them online um, all at once. And the same with the YouTube Creator Studio, which uh, came out a couple of years ago, I think. And it's just meant to make and edit quick videos and then put them up on YouTube. Yeah, and Fernando said here, um, you can also use a PowerPoint. And that's very true. You can use uh, PowerPoint and then you can export it to be a uh, uh, MP4 or a Windows Media um, file. And I've done that before. Some of the earlier videos we have on our YouTube page actually were made in PowerPoint because that's all I knew how to do. And uh, so, yeah, that's definitely uh, very useful. Thanks, Fernando. All right, so now we're at some resources and examples. Of course, like I said, the internet. Um, there's YouTube and Prezi, where uh, both places have some really great tutorials on how to make your own video and how to make a science video. And then, of course, you can just use Google. Google has the answers for everything. And uh, here's another link from the scientist videographer, uh, how to shoot, uh, how to shoot video and avoid common mistakes. She lists, I think, like 20 common mistakes um, that a lot of beginners make when they're shooting video. One of them is, for instance, you know, checking the audio. Um, and so I put that link there and then also just to her main website. Uh, I had a whole bunch of examples on that PDF that I hope you guys still have. And those are really great to look at. I, I looked around a lot for, for those examples, uh, not the ones that I made, obviously. But then over the last uh, few weeks, I've come across a few more. So uh, the NSF has a teaching and learning video showcase every year. This link is to the winners of last year. They're actually accepting videos for this year right now. Um, TED Ed, I put as an example, these are really advanced animation videos. <laughs> so you know, they might be kind of intimidating when you look at them, be like, I can't make that because I look at them and I'm like, I can't make that. But basically why I linked to this is because it, it gives you an example of what the content should be like. So they're really short, really simple videos, and they 
a lot of them explain complicated um, co complicated topics in a simple way. So it's not necessarily the visu the visuals I'm asking you to look at. It's it's the content and uh, how it's delivered. And then the Vizies, the NSF every year has um, a contest for visualizations across the board. So they have posters and pictures and microscopic pictures. And then of course they have video. So this link will take you to the two video winners. One of them is eight minutes long, but it was fascinating. It was about a, an ant and, and what it was a, a guy who wanted to know uh, what's inside a fire ant and what makes it sting so painful. And so he animated this ant and, and then he was able to sort of animate the inside of this ant and show where the venom sacs are. And it was just very cool. A little bit long, but uh, a great, great video. And then the other one was about uh, coral bleaching, which was real interesting. Okay. All right. So that's all I have. I'll go ahead and um, you guys can, I think, can unmute yourselves. But um, I'll go ahead and take any questions that you might have. Does anybody have any questions? Yeah, uh, no questions. This is Reed Brown. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, Reed. Go ahead. So um, thanks for the presentation. I, was, um, I have a pretty good idea of what I want to do. I just want to know if, if, if it kind of meshes with what you or, um, I, I, what, what kind of, what, what kind of feel are y'all looking from these videos? Like, are you looking for more like serious and sincere, or like, could we, could I go in kind of a more like light? Yeah, absolutely. You can go as light as you want, and and the reason we haven't been super specific about what we want is because we want you guys to kind of think outside the box. We don't want to pigeonhole you into please make this very serious video about your research. Like, mm -hmm. we don't want that. We want something that's fun and exciting. And if it ends up being kind of serious and sincere, I don't think that's a problem. But also, we don't mind it being silly and fun. Um, and I think that's why we're trying that, to be yeah. so, I was kind so of big. Yeah. No, I think that's fine. Okay. No, that's great. I, I, I kind of was wanting to go the more like uh, and so I just wanted to make sure that wasn't going to yeah, have you know, kind of go okay. against. Um, no, I think that I think it'll be it but, should uh, be fine, Reed. But yeah. So okay, great. Okay. Well, um. Anybody yeah, else have questions? Um, do we actually have to? This is Fernando Herrera with um, New Mexico Water Resources. Um, how's everyone doing? Hi, Fernando. I was just, hi. Um, I was just wondering, do we have to incorporate an eighth grade class, or was that just an example? No, that was just an example. Um, mostly, what that was for is um, just to get you, give you guys an idea of what the audience would be like. So the audience is general public, but that is a obviously really, really wide idea. So we, we want you to kind of bring it down to an eighth grade science level. That way, pretty much everybody could understand it. If you want to incorporate an eighth grade class, that would be awesome. But no, that's not a requirement. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else have any questions? Hey, Natalie, this is Sue. Um, Hi, thank Sue. you for the great presentation. Oh, you're uh, welcome. Really information, uh, provide a lot of information. So I have a question. So for the K days, uh, we have April the 8th, which is uh, the the um, the footage should be collected. Mm -hmm. Is that really a hard deadline? Um, or no. Just like, okay. No, that's just kind of. Um, I just kind of picked that date out of the air. Um, you know, if you have something cool that's happening in your components, um, you know, in April, uh, the only hard date that I have there is, is April the 29th. Um, and, you know, you can send it to me, you can send stuff to me over the weekend, which is the 30th and then May 1st and then also Monday, uh, May 2nd. But really, I can't get it past May 2nd um, because I'll need to sort of put everything together and prepare for, uh, for the all hands meeting. Okay, got you. Thank okay. you. You're welcome. Uh, hey, Nedley. This Hi. is Sumant. Hi, Sumant. How are you? Uh, I'm good. How about you? I'm good, thanks. 
So uh, my question is, um, we can always add any sort of outreach programs and all that we've done and any pictures that we have related to those, right? Yes, of course. Any footage or images that you guys have already, uh, you're welcome to use. Okay. Yeah. Good. And also any conference uh, stuff that we have also we could put in there just to show people that we are trying to reach out to more audience and more funding and more people that understand this issue and are ready to help. Yes, I think that's that's a great idea. Okay, thank yeah, you. Yeah, you're welcome. Alrighty, anybody else have any questions? I have one last question. Okay. Yeah, just read. Um, so uh, I'm also confused about how many videos. So there are, I'm down here at Tech, and there are two components. So would that be two videos, or, or are we like all rolled into one? Okay, so the components I'm talking about are the EPSCoR components. So, um, you know, we have bioalgal, geothermal, uranium, osmotic, oh, okay. solar. So, you know, those are the components I mean. So they'll, oh. in order to sh make a video that incorporates the entire component, you'll need to coordinate across schools, basically. Um, okay, okay. That, so it's not... Right, so it's not one video per institution, right. it's one video per component. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah, that, that, yeah, that was it. Okay. Uh, any other questions? Natalie, this is Fernando again. Hi, Fernando. Um, is there any preferred format that you'd like us to save this as um, MP4 or um, WMB or um, AVI? Is there anything that you'd prefer? I prefer MP4 or AVI. Um, I'm also okay with uh, MOV, which is the QuickTime format. Um, I can convert any format, though. Um, the only reason okay. I say uh, those ones is because I'm on a Mac, so I know that those ones will work on a Mac. Uh, w, I, I have programs that can play a Windows Media File, so if that's anybody, all anybody has access to, that's okay, too. So um, I wouldn't worry too much about the format. I'll, I'll make it work. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. All right, uh, any more questions? And I'm always available. Um, of course, you guys can email me. Uh, you should all have my email and my phone number, uh, which is in my email signature. Uh, email is a great way to get a hold of me, even if I'm out of the office. Uh, so I'm always around to help, and I really appreciate all of you guys taking this on. I know it seems kind of daunting. I hope it ends up being fun, uh, because really that's what we wanted it to be, was was sort of a fun new experiment. And hopefully it'll be fun to watch them um, at the all-hands meeting as well. So uh, I really appreciate everybody attending, and uh, and that's it. So I'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye-bye.